fucking regular internet. It's already live, bro. Uh, We're live. All right. It's okay. We'll do our best. I think people will be rolling in little by little. What's going on, everybody? How are you? I'm here with my buddy Joe Canizzo, who is a dojo owner in Staten Island. And we want to talk a little bit today about the dojo business and the different issues that's been happening uh, around the world right now in the dojo business, uh, and particularly in New York, right? Because, you know, you were definitely affected by this pandemic. Uh, what's up, Joe? What's going on with you? What's up, buddy? Yeah, how are you, man? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm doing the absolute the best I can. Nice. That's good. That's good. You know, given that, uh, you know, the circumstances, right? Uh, for those of you who don't know Joe Canizzo, he owns a dojo in Staten Island. And he's a good longtime friend of mine. We spent a lot of time out at nationals in 2016. He was one of the people that competed, you know, amongst us from New York, Team New York and New Jersey. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. And Joe owned a, owned a dojo. So, you know, we commiserate a lot about, you know, different issues. Somebody got injured. Oh, my God. You know, somebody quit. Oh, my God. You know, we go back and forth. It's been an honor to be able to talk to you throughout the years and have someone that understands, right? I feel, so, I feel exactly the same uh, about you. You know, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're young senseis and we're trying to um, uphold the values that we think, you know, are important you know, as martial yeah. arts teachers for our students. And I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate that, you know, I have you to bounce things off of, uh, you know, sometimes we commiserate, but a lot of times mostly it's, it, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all productive because we're, um, we're constantly bouncing ideas off each other. And, and we get ultimately the overall goal is to just try to be the best versions of ourselves so we can be better people for our students. Yeah. So we know that you have a dojo and I know you were particularly hit hard by the pandemic. I know your dojo is still shut down, correct? Yeah. I mean, correct. I know this already. <laughs> but uh, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. You know, how's it going? It's been really tough. Um, you know, private the private dojo business in America, for any of the, you guys watching that aren't uh, from this country, is, is very, very challenging. Um, you know, judo, it's, it, it's, it's infused with Japanese culture, and we're trying to do it in, in America, which is challenging enough. So to have a business and you know, have people come in and, and do one of the most difficult, most challenging sports um, that there is. It's tough. It requires, you know, a lot, a lot of tough people, a lot, a lot of tough character and, and, and determination. You know, today we have so much technology. Yeah. It's easy for kids to just jump on an iPad or, or, or watch TV, you know, yeah. instead of having to get into the dojo and, and sweat it out. And, you know. Yeah, uh, it's a tough sport. They, it's a tough business. Yeah, right. Because you know? it really takes a special person to stay in judo and to do judo because it's tough. You know, I know you were particularly hit hard and, uh, you know, there's dojos out there that always kind of had like not so good numbers. And, you know, the teacher had a nine to five and they would teach judo as a hobby. And it's okay to have 15, 16, 17 students, you know, at a time, but you run it at full time, right? You had a thriving dojo business. Uh, and, you know, we would talk about our numbers a lot and, you know, you were doing great for a little while. How bad is it, you know, for you right now? It's terrible. I mean, the, 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 the positive thing was that you and I, because we, we, you know, we, we, we had so much, uh, such a good relationship with feeding things back from one another, we were able to build our schools. I mean, you, we, together we've, we've had, uh, some of the biggest schools I would say in the Northeast. I mean, I, I, I pretty much had about 120 students, um, on the regular, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little bit less. And, um, you know, it's, Staten Island's not the, the busiest place, but, you know, we were able to try to make judo something that everyone can do, not just somebody that's yeah. a young stud or, um, you know, somebody crazy like us that just, just wants to just, you know, fight it out all the time. Uh, we yeah. were able to do that successfully, and it's challenging in New York to do that. Um, it really is, man. Challenging. You know, New York especially is a very expensive place. You know, people think, okay, you know, they do some basic math, right? Like, oh, you have 100 students, right? And then uh, – you know, two hundred dollars a pop. That's twenty grand a month. Like, yeah, yeah, but rent's crazy. You know, operational expenses, all that stuff is very, very expensive, right? Yeah. All right, we have a guy saying my audio is pretty bad. Let me try to fix this really quickly here. I did have a mic, but Canizzo is kind of going in and out. So let me uh try to adjust. Okay, how about now? 
Pitch. Oh, is it better? All right, hopefully it's better. Anyway, back to the story. <laughs> yeah, so when you have a dojo and you have like 100 students and it's like, ah, 200 a month. Oh, shoot, 20 grand a month. Like, yeah, that, that's decent, you know, but the margins are kind of small, right? The margins are tight, especially if you have a business and you have operating expenses and you have rent and all this stuff. You know, you were in a particularly interesting position and you were kind of leveraged because you bought your dojo, you bought your building, right? A lot of people don't do that. They rent, they have a lease. You had a, a full-blown mortgage situation, right? So yeah, so it, you it's, had it, more stake. In New York, a lot of, well, New York City, you pay city tax, you pay state tax, you pay the federal tax. It's one of the most taxed places in the country. And as a business owner, you know, any chance they get to put the hand in the cookie jar, they do it. It could be, uh, you know, you're in a business investment district. They want to beautify the area. They're going to add a tax. They're going to, you know, so we're trying yeah. to hold on to whatever crumbs we can, you know, we, we do. And over the years of having leases and having, you know, um, the uh, the increases go up every couple of years. You know, I, I just pinch pennies. You know, you know what it's like. You you, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. having a dojo, you work in... You, 60 hours a week, you save, you try to do everything you can um, to try to get in a better situation so you can have a more secure space for your students, um, a nicer space, mm. you know, um, and a couple of crazy landlords before I decided to buy the building. Yeah. So I yeah. wanted to make a nice place, you know? Yeah, it definitely changes your mind when you have operational expenses, all these different things, you know, uh, on the top of your mind, especially it's like, oh, man, can I meet payroll, right? I had a staff of, you know, close to six or seven people and it's like, oh, man, I got to meet payroll this month and the pandemic has been, you know, decimating uh our revenue streams and things like this and it's like oh man it's july it's like can i still make it can i still pay these guys you know these guys am i gonna have to tell these guys they have to look for a new job you know so all those different things are real right and you're sort of in the meat of it now you're sort of transitioning into being an activist kind of in this space uh and you sent me a text today like hey man this live stream prevented me from going to jail let's talk about that what is that about well it's a tough, it's a tough topic. It's a sensitive topic for a lot of people. Um, but it's been really tough, not just in New York as business owners, but there's business owners everywhere. And depending on where you live, um, you know, you're allowed to operate in a modified fashion or not at all. I have, I've been closed since March. Um, and it's been really challenging because the federal government has not really given us anything that we can do to try to hang on to just to stay closed and feed our families. And there's been some people who um, decided to take take it into their own hands and try to open up. You know, a yeah. friend of mine um, who actually just got arrested today, um, you know, he's got an autistic son at home. He's trying to do anything he can to put food on the table. And, you know, he, he opened his, his business in Staten Island against the orders and he was arrested. Um, it's a bar, right? Yeah, it's a bar restaurant. And, um, you know, uh, how goes Dude, out to All him? over the news, all over the news. Right. Yeah, it's a big national issue. It's on every, it's everywhere. Right, what is the name of the bar? Uh, Max Public House. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I saw the thing. It's like, uh, you know, sheriffs going over there trying to shut them down. They're like, we're not closing. We're not closing. You know, we're not, you know, they took away the liquor license, right? And then they were like, we're not going to sell alcohol. We're just going to give it away now. It's free. We're going to take donations. And then you've been helping, you know, with them right? Because you believe in this cause, right? And then you went and then today was the day that you stayed home because you were doing the live stream. And then today was the day that you just arrested all of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's tough. I think everybody, uh, everybody generally agrees public health is the number one most important thing. And we all want to do that. Yeah, um, for sure. No one wants people is, to get, you know, sick. Right. Yeah. But I think there comes a point. I mean, it's, we're almost eight months into this and there's all, there's a limit to how much money we can borrow. How many, how many friends and family will lend this money? How many, you know, how much money we can get trying to raise funds with GoFundMe's or taking out loans? You know, there's, there's a limit to how much money we have access to until the point where we actually physically just can't feed ourselves. So I hope the government yeah. does something, can put something together soon and helps out, helps out small businesses, really. Yeah. 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 I mean, in the beginning, there was the PPP loan, right? And then they had the idle loan, the economic injury disaster loan. And that was kind of nice and held us over for a little while. But now those things are completely gone, right? It's like that was eight months ago, nine months ago. So yeah, man, it's tough times. 
DJ Nada, that's my boy Blue. He's a judo guy. You know Blue, right? <laughs> Amazing daughter Tara does judo. Great seeing you. Blue on this thing. Haven't seen you at the dojo in a while. Come back, train. We miss you. I don't know why you haven't been coming, but we've been doing our, you know, 33% independent led, you know, socially distant judo classes, right? We've been doing those, Kinezo. You know okay. that. Yeah. And it's been pretty good. So, yeah, you need to do something about your sound or all that stuff. Good now. I turned that volume up. I think you had a good suggestion. It could also be my tremendously raspy voice. Just, yeah. Know. Yeah. People are like, yo, what's wrong with Joe's voice? It's like, no, he, that's how what he sounds like. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's what you, that's a side effect of being a teacher, the dojo teacher, a sensei. It's like you're always yelling at kids and then all of a sudden your voice is gone. My voice is going to sound like that too in a couple of years. You know, all, all the tournaments that we go to when we're coaching and we're like, you know, Hold that's down. right. You're the lunatic that's coaching and screaming. I'm trying not to do that anymore. It's hard. Right? It's hard. I got to preserve my uh, singing voice and then maybe quit judo and go into American Idol or something. <laughs> 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 Man, so this is the thing, right? You are, you've are you been closed for this whole time, and I know you're, doing Zoom, you're still doing Zoom classes. I'm trying. I have a, a hand, literally one handful of kids um, that I do it for. I'm happy to see them. You know, I've been pretty quiet yeah. myself. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, yeah. I miss all my students. I I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm tremendously. Um, and I just, what do you just, say about those people who are just like, you know what, forget it. We're going to board up the windows and then we're just going to run classes under the radar and you know, no one who gives a shit if they're wearing a mask or not. Like, what do you think about those dojos? Cause you know, we know people who are doing that. You know, we definitely know people in the biz who are like, you know what, this is not real. You know, we're going to just close the doors, lock the doors, and just have underground workouts. What do you think about that? It's tough. I think everybody makes their own choice on what they think is good for them. Um, I think there comes a point where people are trying to weigh, you know, all right, I'm going down. I'm going bankrupt. I, I have no, you know, what can we do? And they have mm -hmm. bills, and they have to feed their family. And I think that they, you know, some people are trying to, they're trying to balance that. And I don't, honestly, I don't know what the right choice is. I just, I know everyone makes their own choice. And, I, you know, I, I <coughs> of, of luck trying to, trying to navigate through that. Yeah. So why wouldn't you do that when you're in a tight place? You know, I mean, I already know these answers, but mostly for our viewers, like, why would, what's preventing you from just saying, you know what, forget it. This is nonsense. I'm just going to freaking do it's, my it's, thing and teach the judo. It's tough. Um, I know that there was a guy in California that opened a gym against a uh, state order, and I think he got locked up. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not a legal expert. Um, I've always tried to, you know, be law abiding, but at the same time, you know, I don't know how I would feel if someone did unfortunately end up getting sick and it was a, a result of them being in my place, then I'd have to deal with that on my own conscience. I don't know. I try to balance. Yeah. It. So I try to, you know, make the, the, the best decision that I can to me. Yeah, man. That was my issue too. It's like, I didn't want, you know, someone dying on my watch. It's like, uh. Right, this guy comes in, go gets sick. He's fine because he's young, but then his dad is old and he dies. And I'm like, oh shoot, now I'm responsible for this. Like, if you know what I mean. So, like, yeah, that's definitely something definitely holding us back. So, the thing, the, sorry, God. Yeah, no, no, you go ahead, you go ahead. The thing that worries me the most um, is once we're, you know, if if the business is like ours, let's say don't don't make it through this um, and don't open again. What kind of world are we looking at? For the future, uh, a, a world. I mean, what we do really is something that holds communities together. You know, it's a place yeah. that people can go. They can be themselves. They can get on the mat. They can work out. You know, you know it. You see it all the time. All people of different socioeconomic statuses interact. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that would never never be doing that. And I, I just yeah. I don't know what the world would be like without places like dojos and 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 and, and places like that. That's true. Dojo is a great place. Look at this. <coughs> in Canada, one of the dojos got caught running, and the fine was five figures. Is that That's five no figures joke, Canadian man. or U.S.? Mm -hmm. He said five in Canada. Five, five figures. Oh, Canadian. Yeah, that's like uh, it's like $300. You know? right, right, right. <laughs> no, that's messed up. I'm kidding. I love Canada. Yeah. Canada is great. Wow, man. We just kind of put down Canada by accident. That was no, uh, no, my no. bad. Canada is great. You ever been to Canada to train? Of course. Montreal, baby. Yeah, Shidokan, that place is amazing, huh? I've, I've a lot of good been, judokas I over there. Go to train. I, I went for uh, for fun for uh, R and R, but yeah, mm. 
Yeah, 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 it's a good place. All right, so what's next for you, man? Uh, you have a GoFundMe. You want to plug that to these guys too? You know, I did a GoFundMe. It was very successful. I have this YouTube crowd to really thank for a lot of that. You know, I think good half, maybe even a little bit more of the donations that came in was through my YouTube channel. And I was really grateful, you know, so thankful for everyone that came out through the woodworks and just gave, you know, and it's like, it was very, very reassuring because man, I was in a tight spot, you know, a little while ago. And I mean, I know you're doing a GoFundMe too. So, you know. Yeah, we're, we're doing what we can. I mean, I, I, I'm personally grateful to all my students that have, have uh, stepped up and, and, and contributed in any way that they can, whether it was sharing the GoFundMe or donating or keeping a monthly membership. Um, I wouldn't be, be able to do anything without it, to be perfectly honest. I'd be in the dark and I wouldn't be, probably even be able to be on this, this podcast. So. Yeah. Brutal, man. Brutal. So what do you think is going to happen to the dojo business in the coming, coming days, months, weeks? I, honestly, I'm really not sure. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, we talk about this, you know, uh, on generally on the, on the regular, I mean, Congress has kind of been on vacation since August. So I don't yeah. know what the positive outlook is. I mean, it's the winter months. It's cold. Yeah. People are hungry. It's true. Winter is coming. You know, it's like Game of Thrones over here, I, right? I, Winter's coming. Things are messed up. Uh, I don't really watch Game of Thrones, but I think that's sort of the premise of it, right? Yeah. Man, brutal. Oh, link to the GoFundMe. All right, Joe, let's see. GoFundMe, save. What was it again? Your thing? I'm gonna I think you just put my name in it, it'll come up. Joe Canizzo. Or Stan Allen Judo. Joe Canizzo. What a name, huh? Oh, there it is. Help my dojo survive. I gotta tell you, man, the video that you posted was kind of corny. Really? <laughs> a little bit, man. Ah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna post it in this thing. All right, I posted how do, it. But how do you really feel, honestly? What the video? You... Yeah. A little bit corny. You know what I mean? Like I'm kind of like watching it right now. It all started with a boy and a dream. Watch it. You can't watch it live while we shoot it so much. You've probably already <laughs> seen it forty or fifty times already. Yeah. Oh man, I wish I would have had this in the freaking you know banners or something, or I could have done it, but I didn't have enough time to prepare to sufficiently. That would have been awesome if we had this like in the little corner right here, just play a little clip and the little baby Joe Canizzo on the thing. He's you a know, huge like full blown. Yeah, you were a cute kid, you know, you cute little Staten Island kid, you know. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's great that you have that at least. You know what I mean? It gives me so much peace of mind. So what's next for you, man? What are you going to do? What do you think about Andrew Cuomo? Let's talk about that. You really want to get – you really – you know, you know my triggers. And you know, let, let's make it juicy, man. Andrew Cuomo, uh, de Blasio, very interesting, you know, types. Cuomo wrote a book. You know how to save the country during a pandemic or something like this. Wow, that's that's good. Yeah. That's good that he had time to do that. This must be uh yeah yeah very yeah. good at time management. Exceptional. And he gave himself a raise. You know he gave himself a raise, twenty five grand. You know that? He's now the highest paid governor in the country. Two hundred and fifty wow. grand he's making. Yeah, that's like chunk change. Mm, and grand. he and no two yeah I mean, and then he wrote a book that's going to be kind of successful. A lot of people are going to read it. You know what I mean? What about that de Blasio? You know what? It's tough. It's tough, I'll tell you, because the the, the mayor is, is keeping indoor uh, fitness classes closed. So gyms were generally allowed to be open, so yeah. people don't know this. You can go into like a, a gym with a, you know, a chest bench, um, leg press, you can do all that stuff. Everybody could be all over the same machines. Um, that's totally, totally allowed, was totally allowed in New York City. It's totally allowed in New York City. But if you put an instructor in the front of the room and he's not exp telling people how to use those machines, it's considered an indoor class and that's not allowed. Also, if you put up a, a screen with a pre-recorded video of an instructor telling people how to do work at workout or a Richard Simmons video, it's considered a class and that's also not allowed. And also synchronized movements especially to music, they were saying. That's what my inspector said. If you have music playing, there's any sort of synchronized movements. Like if you're doing jumping jacks and the guy's doing jumping jacks, like on an offbeat, like that's considered having an indoor fitness class and then you will be banned or fined or shut down right. or something like this. You know what I mean? So I think 
I think people generally that are operating in any kind of indoor fitness space, we don't understand the logic behind that. We would like to to be educated on exactly how uh, video on a screen um, makes something more or less dangerous. And I think that I think that we deserve uh, some data, some some, yeah. some science, so we could just understand for ourselves. Because what it seems to some people, what some people suggest is that it's um, the, the, the big corporations are being favored because they can lobby and they're allowed to be open and the small guys with the small mom and pop shops um, and the small studios are kind of brushed off like, you know, yeah, no big deal. Keep them yeah, man, I actually fully blown did a uh, inspection situation to open up as a gym. Right. And it was like the most ridiculous thing. Uh, I had to do an inspection, health inspection with the camera, with the thing and the screen. And it's like, yeah, this is my gym. It's going to be independently led. The only instruction that will happen is in a one to one setting. And then I took him through an entire tour. I had all the posters and the pictures and, you know, the documentation there. And then they would, you know, I took him into the bathroom. They're like, oh, that urinal is too close to that urinal. You need to put an X over that urinal and, you know, cancel out that urinal. I'm like, okay, okay. So I took tape right away and freaking did it. And then they were like, okay, turn around and show me the sink. And then the, there's a sink with two freaking, you know, sinks right there, right? With the faucet. Like, ah, you know, if two people are standing next to each other, they're not going to be socially distant. So you have to X off one sink. I'm like, okay. And I took tape and I like x it off. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, that'll keep everyone safe. You know? It's got to be a really weird, weird conversation to be having in a bathroom with, a, you know, a bunch of people. With in the, yeah. With the... Yeah, with a random lady on the phone, and it's definitely a weird time, man. You know, all the mask stuff is, you know, we're getting used to it. You know, we're wearing the mask. I know some dojos just said, forget it. You don't have to wear masks on the map, but we're compliant in every way, right? If anybody's listening from the government, <laughs> right? We're wearing our masks and doing judo with masks, sucking the, you know, here's my daughter's mask, but like doing these guys, you know, look at that. Isn't that cute? My, this is my daughter's mask. See that? That's pretty adorable. The little Hello Kitty, Hello Kitty mask. Yeah, I forgot. I don't know why that's here, but you know how it is with kids, you know. So yeah, man. That's well, I guess what's the, up, bro. The upside, the upside of cutting off one of those urinals is for that, you know, in case you ever get that guy, you know, there's a bunch of urinals and he just has to use the one right next to you. That'll that'll stop anybody from doing that. Yeah, I mean, we don't have guys like that at the dojo. You know what I mean? <laughs> there, there's three urinals, and then if I'm on this, the very right one, no one comes in and you know uses the middle one. People generally go to the left one. It's not that kind of a dojo. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's good. You know, uh, we didn't even need to really cross it off, but I mean, you know, I guess so. You have a point. Do you miss being out there in the dojo? I miss it. I miss putting the gi on. I miss the smell of the mats. I miss when the kids come in, asking them how the day's going, what happened at school, what they eat for breakfast, all that stuff. Dude, it's heartbreaking, man. I, I taught a private lesson to this kid, and she was like, uh, I go into school every Wednesday, you know, and, you know, the teachers know it's hard for us, so they just let us talk and play, you know, with our classmates the whole time, and it's something that we look forward to every week. I can't wait to go to school on Wednesdays. It's only once a week. And then when they shut down the thing and I saw it on the news, I was like, oh, man, this poor girl. You know what I mean? And then I saw her today and she was like, oh, man, I'm so sad that I don't get to go see my friends. And I'm just like, ah, oh, man, that's brutal. You know, when you're like in your 30s like me, when you're 35 and you have a kid at home, it's like, ah, it's like I don't get to see my friend. I'm not going to go see them anyway, you know, because I have so busy with the daughter and stuff. You know how it is, right? Uh, not that you have a daughter, but when you're a little bit older, it's easy just to be a homebody. Well, you get, you know. Certain things get bored, but I think everybody's pretty sick of staying home right now. It's like, but these are problems. Yeah. There's no alternatives. You know, you want to be safe, so you stay home. Yeah, you've been going out? No, not really. I've I've been pretty, pretty much by the book, um, as far as like quarantine goes and trying to be uh, as health conscious as possible. Dude, going out seems like a completely foreign concept now, right? Can you imagine? Like, remember that time we went to Atlantic City? We took the, the car, we just drove down there, booked it, stayed in the hotel, like hung out, like went out, like it was a great time, like people dancing, people shoulder to shoulder, breathing on each other, like you drink something, you put it down, and then someone else grabs a drink, so like, oh, I'm sorry, that was your drink, ha ha ha, like no big deal, you know what I mean? It's right. like, hey man, that was my drink, ah! And you're like breathing on top of each other, like no one says anything, it's like a normal thing. You know, now, like looking back to it, I'm like, man, or how about this, remember beer pong? 
Dude. How dirty is that game? Remember that? Remember playing beer pong? I don't think anybody will ever play beer pong again. It's the dirtiest game. Can you so like even back then? It's like you throw the ball, you miss, it hits on the floor. You put it in that dirty water, and then you freaking shoot it, and then the thing goes in, and then there's like stuff floating around in your beer, and then you drink it, right? And then you take the ball, and then you like blow on it for good luck, and then you freaking toss it into the other guy's drink. And then, and it's, then after all the cups are done, everybody just uses the same cups, and it's no big deal. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's the yeah. dirtiest game on this planet, right? They like that's not a you know like. Man, like that's not a – you can't do that we anymore. Went, we went from that to now like when you're in the supermarket, if somebody coughs in the aisle, you're, you're and you just – you're like – you just <laughs> yeah. walk away. You just walk away. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a time. What a time. Do you think judo will come back after this, judo jiu-jitsu? I don't know. I mean, judo wasn't really exactly um, the biggest thing in America – you know, no. so I mean, I think it'll come back in other places. I think um, it's it's happening in other places already, but judo is pretty small in America as it was. I, if you cut that number in half, I mean, what are we mm. even looking at? Look at this. If you put up a sign that states that you are in the middle of a protest, they can't even enter your facility. Unfortunately, hmm. I think in New York, you need to file a permit to have a protest. <laughs> so, is that true? Is that I, true? I, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I think that makes things pretty tricky. We've got some good comments in here. This is really from Paul's <laughs> mess. Could you imagine, like, you come into the dojo, the Turner's like, hey, Sensei, can I do judo? I was like, yeah, put your mask on. And we go like this, we're fucking doing judo. Like, yeah, doing judo with kitty mask on. Classic. Right? All right, Everyone's yeah, the up. dojo. Yeah. What do you got, man? And the dojo's positive outlook. You know, yeah, it's a great place for mental health, man. It's like just to be out of the house for a little bit, get some exercise in and see your buddies. You know, I think that's the most important thing like that my students are getting now. You know, and a lot of people are still afraid. They don't want to catch corona. You know, and I think the argument of like, oh, it's like the flu. It's like, you want to catch the flu? You know, I don't want to catch the flu. I don't want to catch a cold. I don't want to have a sore throat. You know what I mean? But still, it's like, yeah, people are scared to come in, but it's nice to have a place where people can just go. And then feel good about themselves, get a little bit of training in. You know, and I know, you know, my dojo is a very, you know, non judgment zone. It's like a very friendly, open place, right? So it's great to have that. It's great for your mindset. You know, and I'm sure that's what you provided for your students. It's very unfortunate that they don't have that right now, you know? Yeah, I think we're all suffering. We're all suffering in different ways. Um, yeah. It's just been really tough. And it, it seems like it's, it's happened so fast. I mean, it was March. It feels like it was March, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, you know, and, yeah. and then it, it worries you. It wonders like, it makes you wonder like it, how, how long can this go on? And, and then, you know, will we lose, will we lose track? Yeah. 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 It's such a perfect virus for the grappling, right? Cause it's like asymptomatic it spreads. You don't even know you have it. You know what I mean? It's tough. Know. It's tough overall. I think that you know. I think as time goes on, the the experts will get more educated on the science behind it, and they'll be able to give more data mm. on how it works. You know what places are, are more risky than others. I think a lot of a, a lot of a lot of the stuff that's happening right now is done is being done out of precaution and rightfully so. Um, but I think the government needs to do a much 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 better job at helping small businesses stay alive. Um, because I, I'll be honest, I, I don't see even at this point, even if they do come to the aid of, of many of us, I still don't see a large portion being able to come back just because of the, you know, starting, it's like starting over, you know, starting over is, it, it takes a tremendous amount of spirit and a tremendous amount of work to just build the momentum of getting a business going again. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. shot in the arm is, it doesn't always do it. Yeah, it's true, man. And, you know, you fight. Uh, you know, th- we're going to talk about the dojo business and, you know, you sort of have to treat it like a sales process, right? Like there's a pipeline of leads and people call in and those have to be followed up. And then, you know, most people who call in don't actually show up and the ones who do show up, right. you have to follow up with them? Cause only like half of them sign up on the spot, you know, and then membership retention is huge. Am I losing, you know, X number of people and, or people staying over two, three months and all these different things really 
uh, really come into play. Even when you reopen your dojo, okay, vaccines here, you know, it's not like everyone's going to be breaking down the door to re-sign up. You know, you have you know, to fight for those students because a lot of people use a, this as a great chance to quit things, you know? And I know, you know, me personally, if I was doing like something I didn't really enjoy that much that I was grinding through, you know, for instance, my MBA, right? I could choose to go in and do it, but it's too easy for me to do it from home and be remote. You know what I mean? And I'm allowing myself to kind of like take the easy way out, so to speak, you know? And then have the camera off ha half the time and then go do some squats back there. You see the squat rack that I got there? You see that? You know, because I could do that at home. You know, like, yes, you know, the answer to that is, you know, X, Y, and Z. Not that I'm, you know, answering all the questions, but then turn the camera off for a second, go do some of that, come back. You know what I mean? You, It's like sort of the perfect reason to kind of take it easy. And, you know, a lot of those people might not be coming back. Would you call that a, mic a micro flex, having all that gym equipment in the background? Like yeah, that? yeah, I got the the treadmill. I'm gonna do one of those videos soon. It's like a Shintaro Higashi's gym. You know, check out my home gym vlog. But my vlogs are so wildly unpopular on my YouTube channel. Like you don't even know, man. I polled people, like a thousand, like 500 people got back to it, and then only like one percent of the people wanted to see the vlogs. <laughs> I, think they, like, I think they want to see your dad. I think he's the. I think he's the. The hot item. I, every time you yeah. see that, they, yeah. like, you know, they go crazy. Like, man, these people, like, I've been giving them judo techniques and free stuff all the time. They're like, yo, get out of the way. Just get your dad on there and then throw a ladder on there and then just show technique like once a month. You know, that's kind of like the consensus of this thing now at this point. I'm like, all right, you know, if you guys want that, I'm going to make all clickbaity crazy nonsense. Like, you know, karate versus judo. What do you think? The answer will surprise you. Just throw out <laughs> just trash out there. You know, if you guys, these guys are hating on me. Right. You can't make everybody happy all the time. No, you, you can't. You really can't. All right, let's see this comment here. What's frightening is how well-trained the American population is and how docile we've become. 30% of small businesses have shut down and little to no outrage or protest. Yeah. Omega, you are absolutely right, man. You know, uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it's... Do you have any comments it's, about that, Joe? It's unprecedented, especially you would think in America, like super capitalist, um, you know, the American dream. You know, I grew up being told you work hard, you know, you, you work harder than everybody else. You'll be successful <laughs> no matter what you do. You choose, you pick, you, you pick a path, you just keep working, you don't stop, and, and the world is yours. Anything that you want, you'll be able to have. Um, but I, I do agree with him. I think that a lot of people that aren't business owners, um, haven't really been fighting for business yeah. owners. And I think that a lot of it, um, in my opinion is <coughs> some of the like state and, and city, uh, government officials have kind of been villainizing small businesses that have wanted to stay open because they think that we're perpetuating the spread of the virus and, I think that because of the lack of stimulus, the lack of any kind of aid, they've pinched people into a corner. And some people would say that the state and the federal government are kind of complicit in perpetuating this virus to go on by not subsidizing small businesses. So you get both sides and you get both, you know, people who have opinions on both sides. And, and this is this is, you know, why we are where we are. Yeah, man, you, you know, you have that advice of like, oh, you need a six month cash reserve. It's like, yeah. We needed that. PPP paid for two months of that. It's been eight months. Now it's all gone. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, can we get help now? Like still small business. Gym's got it the worst. Restaurants got it bad. You know, uh, who knows what's going to happen next, you know? Here's an interesting one. Okay. My BGJ Dojo has been open for months, and we have had several people catch the virus, but we have not had a major outbreak that and is not uncommon for 50 people on the mat during competition class. That's pretty great. You know, uh, not great. I don't mean great like, oh, people are violating the rule and people getting COVID, but it's nice that you could train. You know, uh, it, it's a very tricky thing, I think. You know, I'm sure you don't want to <laughs> expose what those you go to. Right? That would be crazy. You know, you got to get a lot of heat for that. But, uh, yeah, man, a lot of the dojos are closed right now, but a lot of them are open too. Here we go. 
My dojo and gym just started training last week. The business has survived thanks to the lifeline from the government. You see, he's in Australia. I heard that Australia did a good job with this, right? Yeah, I've, I've been reading that a lot of countries, Japan as well, have been doing fantastic things for, for businesses um, and for people, for, for overall public health. Yeah. Obama, don't tread on me to tread all over me. Daddy government, if you throw me a crap stimulus check. Dude, the $1,200 doesn't really put a dent in it. You know what I mean? I mean, tw maybe $1,200 in a, a small town in, in uh, Georgia m might be a lot of money. In New York City, Yeah. you know, if you leave your car outside in the, the wrong side of the street for too many, you know, for too long, <laughs> yeah. you That's true. Yeah, 9.30 to 11, you know, uh, 11.30 to 1, uh, alternate side parking, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday. Wednesday is a freebie, you know. But you know now they're not doing Monday and Tuesday. They're only doing alternate side parking Thursday and Friday. Did you know this? They keep switching it up on you just to keep you on your toes. It's, that's they'll keep you on your toes. So like now there's not alternate side parking. So people parking on Thursday, they do alternate side parking. They don't have to move their car for a week. Now there's not a lot of turnover, which makes it very hard for people to park their car. Real issue for me, you know, because I drive into the dojo at a time when alternate side parking is just sort of ending or whatever it is. And, you know, it was convenient. And also with the outdoor restaurant seating, they've taken up so much of the real estate on the sidewalk. You know, where cars used to be able to park, they put restaurant tables out there now. So now there's even less space to park on the street. Shintaro, for the people who have never been to New York, why don't you tell everybody what it costs to park your car for an hour in a, in a garage in New York City? I mean, it depends which garage, but if you park, you know, two or three hours, four hours, five hours, you can get dinged 40 bucks, 60 bucks. I've done like, uh, oh, park my car, have lunch, hang out for a little while, and then I get back, and the guy's like, $63, bro. I was like, I had my car in here for, you know, a couple hours, you know? Of course, like, you could shop around and do the spot hero stuff and hack it and then find street parking. But sometimes it's not worth the frustration of, like, driving around for 47 minutes looking for parking, hoping somebody, you know, like, you're doing the slow drive-by with the guy that's walking on the outside of the street. It's like, hey, you leaving next? You going? Right? And doing that all day, like, Thursday, Friday, like, man, it's a huge headache. I don't know why I got started out ranting about that. Well, some people probably don't know too. Staten Island is very close to Manhattan uh, geographically, but like when I would take the trip to come up and work out with you and you guys, to, uh, going over that bridge and the tolls, thirty bucks. You drive in, you look for a spot, can't find it. You spend sixty bucks on a parking garage, you work out, and do some judo for a little while. You're already you're over a hundred bucks, and you haven't even gone out and had, had a couple <laughs> beers yet. Yeah, and that's the most expensive part, you know, in New York City, <laughs> right? Yeah. And the government hasn't even done anything really for the restaurants either. You know, it's like uh, they haven't really helped those guys out. I know a lot of restaurant owners are struggling right now. Restaurants are closing left and right. You know, um, I went to grab a taco for lunch today, like right down the street. I was like, all right, I'm at the dojo early. I'm going to go grab a taco really quickly, you know, and I went to go get some tacos and then the freaking place was closed. They were so good. I looked in. I'm like, oh, my God, this place is closed now. I have to get pizza next door. Pizza is great. You know, but brutal, man. You know, businesses are shuttering left and right, you know, pretty soon. We're all, we're all going to only be eating at Chipotle and McDonald's and all these chain restaurants that can sort of weather this. And they have power to, they have a lot more leverage, you know, to deal with these landlords. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's tough. I just had a conversation with someone uh, earlier today and they were, they were trying to navigate through, you know, how, do they, how, how does the law actually work? I mean, you know, very, unless you're an attorney, you know, uh, most people don't generally know. And he, he was educating me and he said, he said, you know, a lot of the things that are happening uh, with mandates and so on and so forth, yeah. um, they're not really challenged. They need, they need to get, uh, the, the courts need to really look into them and see what's right, you know, what's enforceable, what's not. Um, but the big corporations have a lot of this money to, to, to pay for these fees um, and to support themselves through this pandemic. But small businesses, you know, if we wanted to take something to the Supreme Court and say, you know, we need, we need we need stimulus, you know, or we have to open, we need to get so much money and go through so much in appeals and so much, you know, pay experts and pay attorneys, and we just can't get it together. We're too fragmented, and it's 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 really tough. It's really really yeah. tough. Aren't you part of that fitness coalition? I know I'm like on the newsletters, and I wrote, you know, I the signed the thing and gave money to them, but like, what's going on with that? The fitness coalition. They're trying to do everything that they can um, to not only just, uh, you know, lo lobby for stimulus for us, but to try to hire experts, to try to see, you know, 
how how uh, dangerous is it to be in gyms? Is it what's the most dangerous aspect? Because some people, maybe you guys don't know. Some people don't know. Um, in New York City, they have uh, you you were mentioning it earlier. They have protocol. You know, we have to have uh, contact tracing records. We have to clean bathrooms at you know uh, every hour. We have to make sure people are six feet apart, wearing masks um, at thirty three percent capacity. We do all these things, but we you know. We want to contribute to uh, figuring out, uh, you know, what's the best scientific approach? What, how yeah. much of this is working well? What should we be doing more of? Um, and, you know, they're working on that. They've, they're hiring experts. They're, they're trying to do everything they can um, to try to help gym owners um, move forward in a healthy fashion. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're a great group. <clears throat> All right. So what would you like to see from the government? Like what kind of a helping hand would you like to see? From the government, well, like if you could just decide, all right, this is what I exactly what I want from them. What would it be? We got PPP for eight weeks. We've been closed for nine months. Yeah. Give us the PPP for the the, the time between the when the eight weeks ended, and now, and I think that that would be a good start. What is that? Again, so that's like seven months of PPP. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot yeah, of money. I don't know if people know about the PPP and how it works. Generally, I'll, I'll give an I'll give an outline. I'm not an expert, so if I say anything wrong, uh, don't don't correct me, please. Um, yeah, people will correct you. People will yeah. correct you. This is we're on YouTube. <laughs> so they, they gave us they gave they gave business owners uh, a grant to be used so that in the beginning, this is the rule: seventy percent of the money had to go towards payroll. Now, when you have a dojo's like Chintaro and my own. Our payroll accounts for a very small percentage of our overhead, you know, rent or mortgages and, and utilities, everything's astronomical. So we had to spend 70% on the, on the smallest portion of our expenses, which left very little uh, to none left for the operating expenses. So what do we end up doing? We end up taking our own money. We end up going and borrowing money from anybody that we know or doing GoFundMe's to try to put the money back into the business so that we can try to survive. Um, you know, th that's pretty much how, how, how it works. So they gave us a guideline on how to do it. And it was only for eight weeks. Um, and depending on when you applied, the, the, those eight weeks could have been maybe, let's say, uh, the middle of March to the middle of May. All right. But yeah. if you did it a little later, anything before then was on you. So yeah. it really depends yeah. on when you did it and, you know, where you are now. But I think that would be a good start. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to this guy right here, Jason Dukic. He came. He runs a dojo.com. I did a live stream with him. You saw it, right, Joe? I did. I did. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he has the dojo.com. Guys, check it out. Really cool stuff. It's going to be like a full-blown martial arts integrative thing, right? I have a white belt curriculum on there. I'm going to expand to Nogi Judo if you ever want to see Nogi Judo. Uh, Jason came just to hang out and do some Judo and film some stuff with me. Uh, we did wear a mask, right? Um, and I got tested last Tuesday. So, <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for commenting. The full day of hanging out with Jason. He's a really cool dude, man. Joe, you would love that guy. Very smart guy. Fun guy. Uh, anyway, I was digressing. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, PPP. That's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money. Um, eight months of payroll, right? I mean, I have a pretty big payroll at KBI because I had you know, maybe six or seven employees over there. So that was kind of very useful. Uh, that would be nice, you know? As a start. Nice. Hmm? As, a, as a start. Yeah, that would be a start, you know, seven or eight months of PPP. And then uh, what else? What else would you do if you were in Como seat? Well, I think that would be good to get, you know, things started. And I think that there should be some kind of a program to um, revive the businesses that have officially closed and tapped out. You know, um, there's a lot of value. There's a lot of people who provided a lot of value in their communities. Whether it was with martial arts or otherwise, yeah. not the place you were mentioning, um, there needs to be an incentive to get them back to life. You know, I know, like you know, people talk about the SBA loans and stuff like that, but you know, it's it's the equivalent of taking a second mortgage out on your house. It's uh, you know, it's around four percent over thirty years. Yeah. And nobody bats an eye when you know a lot of people who don't have a business, they just assume that you know we should just keep taking it, just keep taking it, but we're digging ourselves in deep, deep, deeper and deeper holes. Yeah, man, I, I, I'm using that item loan, you know, from the government and I have to pay that back, you know, next year, right? I've already dipped into it. You know, I burned through the savings, the cash cushion that the dojo had, you know, through eight months of not being able to operate. 
actually, is it eight months now? Maybe it's even more. Well, I'm operating now. I have a one-to-one -one situation. And it's been pretty good, you know, and the support has been amazing. You should do privates, you know. Privates are good. <laughs> but they're time-consuming and they're hard on the body. You know, it's like now all of a sudden I'm taking break falls. You know, people, teach, you know, working on me. It's like, hey, you know, move the person and snap them down. People are like, you can't get on my head. You know, like back to back to back. I feel like the third guy cranking on my neck. I'm just like, oh, my God, my neck is killing me. You know what I mean? But it feels good to be back there. So Lara can't throw you, but these other guys can? What's going on here? <laughs> Lara will throw me on YouTube once eventually, but, you know, so many people have been asking about it. It's just like, I was just kind of like, all right, it's almost fun to just deny them and see <laughs> them just <laughs> complain about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. Tough times for gym owners. Hopefully they come up with something good, you know, but this vaccine situation is kind of hopeful, right? Yeah. I think a lot of people are uh, banking on it. Yeah. So we'll see, man. I hope uh, all the good things to you. Good luck to your dojo. And you want to, anything else you want to say? Well, thanks for just having me on. I think it's, um, I think you're doing a great job with your channel. Thanks, man. Um, uh, you having great guests on. Um, Obviously not just me, yeah. um, but you're, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're like the voice of judo now online. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people interested in martial arts. We're all kind of stuck at home. Yeah. And it's good to have you tune in, whether it's technique video. Or yeah. Just coming up and, uh, and chatting. And, and I really like the comments. I think people write some really good comments um, and they provide a lot of value too. It's a great yeah. experience overall for everyone. I appreciate it. So for all you guys that are watching, I'm going to try to do a live stream every Tuesday. And then sometimes I might bring friends of mine like Joe on, you know, who's a dojo owner. And maybe I, I got my best, you know, buddy from college coming on. He was a wrestling coach, a college wrestling coach. That's he's going to come on soon. So Tuesday at 9 p.m., I'm going to try to make it a consistent thing to do a live stream. So put it on your calendars. Thank you, guys. I, I see a lot of people who are coming back over and over. So I greatly appreciate that. And then a lot, also a lot, the, a, a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people, I just learned this on YouTube too. Um, I guess you have to enable the notifications. Otherwise they don't tell you that there's a video coming up. So yeah, guess, yeah, try that's to do true. that guys. And you'll, you'll know, you know, when something's coming up. Yep. And then Jason Bukic is the dojo.com. That's going to be a big thing. You know, hopefully, you know, uh, it's all free right now till January 1st until the new website is built. So we're, they're in the beta phase and then, you know, subscribe. It's free, completely free. I have a white belt curriculum on there that I hope to add on to, you know, in the coming weeks and months. So go check that out. That's going to be very exciting. And then I also have a podcast going with Peter Yu. And I know your thoughts on that, Joe. It is great. <laughs> Peter, when, I was, when I was cutting weight in, um, in uh, for nationals, Peter sat with me after he already made weight in the, uh, in the sauna, man. He's one of the best guys on the planet. And also, yeah, that that's great. Yeah. When you get a chance, um, if you could put the GoFundMe link in the bio, I think that in the part in the description of the video, I think that'd be dope. Oh, all right. Let me let me freaking try to do that right now. Let's see. Do I go to edit video here? I'm just all right. I don't, what do I don't go to computers? GoFundMe. If you guys could share me. it, it would be great. We're hanging all on. I'll put that on there. Right here up in New York. And uh, all the help's appreciated, truly. Yeah. All right. This is Joe Canizzo. Zo's GoFundMe. All right. It's in the description of the YouTube. So hopefully you get a couple bucks from there, you know. And uh, Ren, thank you for commenting and engaging, you know, in our content or live stream. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys, everyone, for watching. Uh, as usual, pleasure. And then, Joe, I'll probably call you on the phone tomorrow. Joe, you're my guy, man. I get in my car to go to the dojo. I have a 30-minute drive. I'm like, all right, I'm going to call Joe and bullshit for 10 minutes. You're my guy, man. Yeah. And I really hope you make it. This is what know, we do. I hope we make it, man. We got to keep judo alive in New York. Yeah, man. I, I like uh, calling you and talking about the local judo scene. And this guy was being a lunatic at this tournament. And that guy was doing that. And it's kind of nice. You know, because a lot of the dojo owners are older. You know, we're in our 30s. You know, how old are you now? 35? 37. Oh, shoot. You're older than me. Look, I got this. I got this. The snow's coming. Yeah. You pretty much, pretty soon, you're going to be like an old, decrepit, angry sensei, you know, standing at the door. You know, you know what? That's where you're headed, man. 
People only see <laughs> sen- they only see the senseis when they're old and they got like the the long the long stash. They don't see the process. This is, you know, eventually yeah. we're gonna get there. Both of us together. Hopefully one day I could grow a goatee like you. I can't even do that. You know, I'm still like I got this baby face thing going. You know, this People isn't exactly too a young. good one, but I could shave it off. I'm like, I could I could like velcro it to your face if you like. How do we sign up for judo classes? Go to the website, kakushibudo.com. That's a cool little thumbnail. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Is that uh, Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely some characters in, on my uh, YouTube channel. I, I really enjoy People don't think I read through the comments, but I do. That's the best part. Even the mean ones, man. I'll, I'll read it and then get my feelings hurt a little bit sometimes. I'm like, man, this freaking guy. You know what I mean? Sometimes it feels good. It feels good to feel something, right? Sitting around. Standing yeah, yeah. Walls. Yeah. Mostly positive comments, but every now and then I'll get one that stings. You know what I mean? What is it? Is it like a, they tell you that you need more like skincare products or they insult your hair? <laughs> which, 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 one, which one really gets you, get, cuts you deep? <laughs> oh, man. There's, there's too many to say. There's too many to say. <laughs> but, you know, it definitely keeps it, uh, you know, interesting for sure. 40 is around the corner. Oh, I know Muhammad. What's up, Muhammad? Yeah, 40. I'm going to be 36, man. A couple weeks. Birthday coming up. I feel like this year was like a wasted judo year. You know, like every year, it's like you feel like you get a little bit better at something or a little bit better at something else. And yeah. not being on the mat the whole year, it's just like, oh, man. Yeah, you got to build a home gym, man. That's what I did. See this? I don't see any Tatami. I don't see any Tatami. I don't know. No, I mean I have a I have two dojos in the city, so I'll use oh, that Tatami. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no one's in there. I go in there with Lara now. I'm like, Lara, can we make videos? You know? And she's been she's such like, a again? great sport about it. Yeah, she's like again. You know, and uh it has its challenges, you know. Like I just did like a video with my cousin Eugene about like preventing the overthrow on a Koshigurma. Okay. And I'm like, this is like preventing the overthrow if you do Throw the Koshiguma too hard, you're going to overthrow them like this. And then, boom, and I ripped it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I can't really do that with with Lara. You can, but then, you you know, you don't want to have to pay for it later. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> no, she's a great sport, man. People love her on my YouTube channel. I think that's the direction I got to go, man. I just got to just clickbait everybody and be like, hey, you know. Why don't you just set her up on her, her own channel? You know, I was trying to convince her to do that, but she's so busy trying, you know, finishing school and trying to get into medical school and all this stuff. So she doesn't really have the time for it right now. But yeah, maybe I'm sure that all these guys will leave me and unsubscribe and subscribe to Lara's, and then pretty soon she's gonna take over. <laughs> that could be fun, right? Maybe she's listening right now. She's upstairs. Hopefully, she's listening. She said she was like, "I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna comment." I was like, "Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it." Did you comment? Uh, Is she in there? No, she was not in it. She <laughs> she hears me ranting about this stuff 24-7, you know what I mean? And I know some people were like, oh, she got a brown belt. She was doing judo this whole time during the pandemic. I was like, no, she wasn't doing judo this whole time during the pandemic. But her education is top-notch because she hears about judo all day, 24-7, nonstop. You know, I go in like, hey, Jason came in today and did jujitsu with me and blah, 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 blah. And these are the positions I need to work on and that. And then I watched this video nonstop, man. She's probably bleeding from the ears at this point. Oh, for sure, man. She just hears me rant about judo stuff all day and night. Judo this, martial arts that. This is what I think about this. You know what I mean? So her knowledge is like up here, really. Right. You know, has she been doing randori for eight months during the pandemic? No, but who has? You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. So when she gets back to randori, she'll grow into it, you know? That's it. That's all. Yeah. So anyway... Thank you, Joe. Uh, I hope this was enjoyable for a lot of people. Please give me direct feedback. Uh, Please give me just ways that this stuff can be better because, you know, live stream is not really what I've been doing so much. And I don't even know if it's good, you know. So let me know. And, Joe, I will talk to you soon, man. Sounds good, bro. Thanks again. Later, guys.